Hi, Sarbjit. How are you? Good. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good doing to see good. you early in the morning. Yes. You have a... Palace Hotel, San Francisco. Yeah, it's beautiful nice. place. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll roll some beetle after I yeah, yeah. shoot some. Later. Oh yeah, good idea. <laughs> Excellent. So, so, what so you cloud. Present? Yeah, cloud. Wow. Yeah, we were talking about it. Well, yeah, and I realized we should probably be recording it. And I was my talking about my real concerns about Google Cloud. Um, I don't think anything imminent is going to happen, but you know, you have a uh, uh, you know uh, the big um, had the uh, health records company pull out of Google Cloud, saying there's no customer demand. You had the reorg, although I think it was minor, but you had you had layoffs right at Google Cloud. Yeah, and, yeah. and I have a lot of stuff on Google Cloud, so I was just worried that something's going to happen to them, even if they just pull back. I, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to pull out. What are, what are your thoughts? I think the the way the Google platform started was very closed early in the days. Like, like you know... Google App Engine, that's why I App Engine, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So that was like very closed, like vendor lock in right? But then I think the Google Cloud 2.0 is more like AWS. It's easier to use an AWS, I think. Yeah, right? They've yeah. gone for that, that usability. I love the console. I can just get stuff done. AWS feels like a bunch of loose parts still, like a loose parts box, whereas GCP seems more put together, right? You know? Yeah, and also they have uh, an advantage over AWS in a way that they, they came a little behind, so they they can learn from their mistakes. The, the, the portfolio is not that heavy. Uh, it can be like lean, if you will. I believe the programming, the programmers will morph into data scientists, right? No, oh, yeah, of course. So, and then that's where that's they have where some everybody's got to pick up the skills right now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why where they have some advantage, and they're very open source friendly. I mean, not that AWS is not, but um, Google. They have a real reputation for it. Yeah. 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 Well, so and also, I look at if I was on the board of directors and I was looking at tens of billions of dollars going out the door, tens of billions in capex going out the door for six percent of the market. That would give me pause, right? That that is true. <laughs> that is true. But again, this is Google. They have the deep pockets. They can do. Capex. Well, they could. Do, they could fund it indefinitely. But will their investors let them? I mean, that's the thing. Shareholders at some point will go. You're spending all this money, and what, what's the return? Uh, so we'll see. I mean, yeah, I think. I think. It's, I think their market share is going to grow. So yeah, it is uh, growing. I think if 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 you go like it's same thing with the consumers of the cloud and the producers of the cloud is that if you are measuring this quarter to quarter, you can't do it. It's not for faint hearted. No. The ROI on the cloud, even if you are a cloud service provider or a consumer, is longer. So it takes yep. longer to see the benefits of the cloud than as compared to this traditional. Well, and Jeff Bezos was very good at that. He did this with Amazon Web Services. I remember I asked Werner Vogels, the CTO of Amazon one time, how much have you spent? This is before they had released any numbers. He looks at me and he says, billions. And billions. So this yeah. is when they were tiny, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's the same thing with Blue Origin. He's taken the long view, which is uh, you know the, the, his space investments. He haven't launched anything yet, but they, they, he's been pouring money into that since 2012, right? Yeah. So it, Google doesn't have a history of doing that. So my real concern is this is they're in Yahoo's position when we were talking about search, right? So you know, remember there was there was a Google, there was Microsoft, and there was Yahoo with six percent of the market. No, no one wants to be in the Yahoo position, right? You know, so uh, that's that's my my. I, I, I was worried about that. Actually, their DNA. If you if you if you every company has a, like this persona or DNA, I think it's more like focus on developers in their like. I think that's why they were they used to be right. They used to. At some point, they used to hire only, P only PhDs, you know, that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And then they kind of lose on there because they were losing some talent and all that stuff. But having said that, I think they have the software chops, and and you need software chops to cook up cloud. Mm -hmm. You can't oh. just throw money at oh, it. Oh, it's deep, deep engineering. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Yes. So I think I think they will do good. I think they will do better. I want them to do good. <laughs> then I think yeah. they will be number two. I don't know if they can be number two, one for the next five years, but they, I think they. Do you, I mean, have, of course. do you have a shot at number two, do you think? I think so. Um, like, okay, the compared, problem is comparing Apple to Apple, yeah. right? Infrastructure service and platform as service, I think they can be. But in SaaS, like, you know, Microsoft's main revenue source is their Office. Office 365, 365 is a monster. Is a monster. Yes. Yeah. You can't compare those things. I mean, even though Google has their Google. Well, Google Cloud's doing it too. There's GCP yeah. and then there's Google <laughs> Cloud, which is bigger and includes G Suite and all of that. Yeah, all those, uh, yeah. So, suit, well, we yeah. live in interesting times, and, and then you have wild cards like Alibaba Cloud, which is the only one of the clouds growing. Everyone else's market share is declining except for Amazon, Azure, 
a GCP and Alibaba, everyone else, even though they're all growing, right? Yeah. They're all shrinking compared to the top four, right? In terms yeah, of the growth rate is slowing down because the base is higher now, right? Yeah. They have a lot more. Like growing from 5 billion to at 20% is different than growing from 1 billion to 20 billion. I mean, we know that game, yeah. right? Yeah. So in, 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 in China, whatever it is, we think it's top economy and all that. Like it's, it's bigger numbers wise, but they're way behind. Mm -hmm. us in, in so many ways. I, I grew up in India. I can see that India is a pretty big economy. But when you go to those places, you have been to all these places, you see how much they still need to do. Of course, China well, is way ahead. Well, I mean, let's talk about that. So we're seeing the rise of national clouds. People are getting tired of, of putting all their eggs in America's cloud basket, right? Yeah. Uh, and they want some. They want some sovereign control. They have data residency regulations. More. We're about to enter hyper regulation of, of online uh, services. Um, why doesn't India have a its own national cloud? Europe's going to do it now. Germany's going to have their own too, right? But Europe and Germany are going to have their own national clouds, which um, those lo businesses will seriously look at, right? Yeah, India. India strength is its democracy, and it's and also it's its weakness. So a poor well, but democracy. They, but India does big things like they just change their currency, right? I mean, I mean, and successfully, <laughs> right? It depends on who you. Oh, that was a yeah. debacle. I mean, that was a <laughs> stunt. Actually, it was more. It was a political stunt. It was. Like, it didn't solve any problem. But it shows they can make big changes. They, though, they, yes, they have a proof point. They didn't change the currency, by the way. They just changed the currency note. Yes. Just one. Five hundred dollar one, I think thousand one also, but it creates so much disruption. I mean, it didn't solve any problem. It, it, it's but it's just, an amazing growth story, and they should be have a piece of this. I don't. I would think that it's highly bureaucratic yeah. country. It's yeah. highly corrupt, highly bureaucratic country. I'm sorry to say that, guys. On the camera, <laughs> um, I have seen it. I've lived it. It still is. Um, and yeah, like so, you know, look, look what happened in Delhi you know, two days back. It's not playing to its sacral roots. Um, I think religious fundamentalism so will. You don't bring think it. like the, the big service providers can, can do it? Accenture did. Accenture Cloud is amazing. Um, and in terms of most enterprises, don't know how to manage the cloud, to do cost control, to do, do, do any of the things that would require to do cloud lifecycle. So they're saying, we'll do it for you because we've done it for thousands of other companies. We've productized it. No matter what cloud you use, or all, if you use them all, we're going to help you manage them through our cloud, right? So I would think that we're seeing that. The, the big service providers doing in India is getting them ready to just say, why don't we build our own data centers? You know. I think they will. I think they will in maybe five to ten years from now they will start building it. India got independence in forty seven and for like a decade or so they didn't have their like, foothold like, even start institutions. I mean, those are British institutions in, in India right now, yep. what we have, the like universities and civil system and all that stuff. So I, they will start building the sort of India's core own so institutions gradually it's like 75 80 years into it now well I, like, I actually ask all this for a reason so I, I agree with what you're saying because so we're seeing the rise of national clouds yeah. and that's greatly complicated it's, it's easy to manage multi-cloud when you got one two three four clouds when you have like a dozen new ones and then you got the fed cloud here in the united states right um, yeah yeah the whole jedi um the complexity of managing that is beyond the experience of most enterprises so one of the things I proposed to you uh, in a Twitter conversation recently was, we're going to need some intermediaries to manage, to help us manage this, right? Is that manage or cloud uh, managed service providers, cloud service providers? What does that look like? Is it a broker? Yeah. Um, and you know we saw that great that great post uh, uh, about distributed cloud, right? So yeah. Edge and cloud behave very differently, and again, it adds to that that whole process of. We, are we really going to maintain uh, vendor relationships with uh, you know 50 different cloud providers um, and to deal with all that? We're going to say, look, I can just outsource that. Right? Yeah. This, this is why I go to the store. I don't visit each one of the people I buy from, although I do buy direct from Apple. I, I believe the I, I see Edge uh, as a distributed cloud. Actually, that's yeah, how we course. see it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I think the cloud providers will dominate that. But having said that. There is some room for telcos. You're talking about, you're about the big clouds? Yes. Yeah, okay. The big cloud providers, they will dominate that area also. In the genetic sense, like whatever the genetic services are needed at the edge, compute, storage, network is always there, right? So um, that's a big thing about the edge, right? It's faster networks, closer to where you need that computer, right? So I think they will play that game pretty well. Calcos have missed so many boats 
I think they will they will have another chance. Well, they have another chance, but they're going to squander it. With, <laughs> right, we know with, that. With, with 5G. They're we know that. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna blow it up they're, again. They're going to treat it like a dump pipe, and they're going to lose the opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. I, was, I was talking to uh, a gentleman yesterday. They, they do they do energy trading and all that stuff. They think, can we do like energy cloud, like local energy for, for edge? Uh, we had like 90 minute long discussion back and forth, and you know, we was trying to understand how the like, whole cloud works and all that stuff. So yeah, it, it's um, I think it will be more fragmented market as compared to cloud on the edge side because there will be some industry specific devices and like specified specific compute. Well, all this boils down to complexity management. So I believe the future of IT is about complexity management. Yeah, you said that pretty well. Yeah, and that's that's the big issue. So who's going to do it? Are enterprises going to do their own complexity management, or are they going to need help? So I'm trying to figure this out. I don't, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. know the answer for sure, but I, I see this, with this theme coming up over and over again. We need some way to bring this together and, and make it more manageable, um, to make it successful for us. We can't learn all the mistakes ourselves, so how do we get make that experience into what we're doing? So some intermediary is going to help with that. I don't, I don't know. I think I saw. Okay, I went to uh, the University of Windsor to talk to some students, and they invited me to talk to them. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, I, I will cook up some stuff. And I, on the plane, I picked up some of these slides, uh, mostly. And one, a couple of slides I put together were on the lay of the land. So I, I was forced to think about like what are the different actors or mm -hmm. kind of personas of different actors or different stakeholders in the whole sort of bigger IT stack. We have SIs, we have WARs, we have uh, technology providers and they're turning that, turning into service providers yeah. and so forth, right? And we have... Um, well, they're all turning into everything, right? That's the thing. Yeah. Gotta be the the whole, they have to be the whole stack, right? Yeah, the managed service providers and SIs. Those are the two sort of actors, if you will. I think they will play a role, but their roles are more. But they're not going to drive like a spot market. Like I, I believe that the commodity trending in cloud is something that, that the market really wants. Was, the way SIs and, and those guys work, we're not going to have that, right? The pro, yeah, we we started like there were a few companies started about like nine, ten years back when I was at Rackspace, just around that time. By the way, at Rackspace, we used to be number two cloud oh, after I remember. AWS. For, I remember, but then you looked at the capex 18, numbers yeah. <laughs> for eighteen months or so. Our leadership actually, we tilted. It was great. I, I was tracking you guys on my charts. Well, Rackspace yeah. is number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually we stumbled because we tilted more towards OpenStack. We put all our bets on that. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons doing dot com. By the way, we all did. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was in the start, I was in the dot net. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the the dot com. I had a CTO of a startup. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I was at Commerce One, which was the darling of dot com days. And our stock went from twenty one dollars to nine hundred ninety nine within like eighteen months. Yeah. So we, we were the stock. Are your options still underwater? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It actually, it went down, and I mean, I have a drawer, I have a drawer full of money. options underwater. <laughs> yeah, some people lost their homes because of greed. They will yeah. exercise but not sell. Yeah. And they had they had AMT and all that stuff. Oh yeah. It was a news. I mean, it was a big story. People, some of my colleagues were on Oprah show crying about like okay hey oh, i'm I losing my that. home and irs doesn't listen to me right well coronavirus may do that to cloud this this time around we'll see uh, <laughs> i i doubt that i think coronavirus is i couldn't the, believe how the empty the airports were to come here or the empty streets are here this morning it's unbelievable yeah people are getting a little scared right now but i i think it's not gonna be that big deal. Yeah. We'll, we'll see Anything can should happen. be over by summer. And asteroid can hit the like this the wall, you know, this is Earth. Well, I think technology <laughs> technology is going to help. Like remote working now is is so good that it actually shouldn't impact our economy very much. The cloud is actually helping us companies stay productive when people can't, you know, go to public places and go to businesses and be together. So actually, I, t I always think like I'm economics major, by the way. I'm not CS That's major, nice. so um, I always think in these terms. Like I, I think it, cloud. So the fire of the cloud got flared with the when the economy went down because it needs less capex, mm -hmm. right? From consumer side, easy to spin up servers and like it's easy to get started. You don't have to get all the servers and all the stuff. Like capex is low, so barrier to entry is low. So it has done good in the down economy, and now it's doing good in good economy also because money is cheap now. Mm -hmm. Low interest rates. We don't usually don't think about those things. Um, I think in terms of price elasticity, or uh, price elasticity of cloud versus price elasticity of uh, like your own infrastructure, those are different. 
okay, plus like so that's the value proposition. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's higher. Means like if it if it get if it gets expensive, it will the demand will go down. Yes, and that's why I believe. I mean, it's my estimation that cloud prices on average will fall this year also. Oh yes, well yeah. it's a race to the bottom. I wouldn't want to be in commodity cloud. I think I, yeah, uh, things like SAP cloud is really smart because you're saying let's let's build the the, the value add services mm -hmm. higher up on the stack. You can run whatever hyperscaler you want underneath, but we're going to make the money off the highly differentiated services as opposed to, you know, unless you've got the, some of the deepest pockets in, in the business world, period, you can't even play in hyperscaler, right? That is true. Actually, you know, Oracle and SAP, they're mainly application providers. Yeah, that's right. Like software providers. Like, they should turn into SaaS businesses, not platform, but problem with Oracle, again, ex Oracle also. So, problem with Oracle was that bunch of like they were numbered like one or two depending on what month you were looking at in middleware traditional middleware yeah. right um, so they wanted to recycle that stuff into go to the next level so a, we are the we are good pass player right but then i always say this in order to be a number one or number two pass player platform as a service you have to be number one or number two infrastructure as a service player they go hand in hand yeah, the proximity matters go back to our, <coughs> think about google and that conversation right what you just said that, yeah. that's the problem right yeah that, that is the problem there yes because they they don't have the middleware for enterprises they're more like they come across as more like b2c company than b2b they're they just don't seem cloud native to me at the end of the day they have the, okay their core business is there because of cloud. That the way they run their stuff, right? That in you know, their own data centers, the Kubernetes came from there. Like they know how to manage all that but stuff. It, so when I um, when I talk to companies and look at what they're evaluating, unless they are a big Oracle customer, Oracle is never on the list of, of cloud companies to look at. Exactly. Cloud, uh, Oracle is converting their own customers successfully to cloud, no question about it. But are they getting? The rest of the market, the data shows that they're not, right? Yeah, you know. Oracle is a good MSP, a managed service provider, for their own stuff. And in that context, that's what they, their cloud is. Um, we were getting a lot of business as an, as an MSP, and then we started with that's cloud. So putting the, your, yeah. we're running your applications in our cloud for you. So, yeah, man. And, and well, I, I think Oracle Cloud is a capable platform. I just don't think they're getting market share. Yeah, I think the, uh, the, when it comes to cloud, you, there are two, I think, main traits. One is that you need to know how to operate data centers. Like, the pennies. The pennies saved per server, uh, like, it adds up. Like, the scale is the game. The number two is the developer productivity or APIification of infrastructure. How automated it can be that's oh yeah well, and i'm talking to many startups these days who are doing incredible things about highly dynamic cloud topologies in real time to to deal with uh, scenarios as they come up like if you're in, you determine that your your current configure cloud configuration is under attack um, you know uh, by uh, you know cyber security uh, yeah the um <clears throat> It can tear everything down and move it somewhere else without no disruption in in operations, right? That's yeah, like, like we said again, cloud native, like a failure of node is assumed, right? So in, if you could take it to the next level of abstraction, the failure of a region is assumed in a way. No, well, no fixed targets, which yeah. you really want, right? Yeah, exactly. So it has infrastructure has to be fluid enough to take care of itself. So that, that's, our, that's our dream goal, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in that context, nobody Seriously, nobody comes close to AWS. They're far ahead of anybody else, including Google. I think Google can't catch up with them because of their oh, deep. Oh, they want to. Right? They're deep. Like I said, I don't know if, or, if Oracle wants. That's where the cloud native, you know, discussion with Oracle comes from. I just don't know if they want to be on the bleeding edge of, uh, of, of the capabilities you need to have to be a, a mature and sophisticated uh, cloud provider. And I don't see developers aren't there either. The problem Oracle has is when I talk to their enterprise customers. They're like, we only use products because they're really good. We really don't like Oracle very much as a company, and they're, and they're, they're not very nice to us, right? We, the pricing the pricing strategies are just bruising to some most buyers, right? Yeah, Oracle actually blew, blew the, the opportunity of having a good infrastructure as a service in, service in place. Um, I think it was the stubbornness of Larry. Larry runs a company even if it's CTO or... Yeah, right you know, a sweep over there, whatever, like he makes the calls, right? He just put the dumb, like, you know, proxies up there and not listening to them, right? So, 
he was drying his feet. Um, I think I, I was like, I was like, hey, acquire rack space. They know how to operate data centers. We have like like six, seven, six like big data centers in footprints in different parts of the world. Uh, we were building Singapore and Australia and stuff like that. Like it was a, like around five to six billion dollar deal. They could have done it, uh, but they blew yeah. it. All right, let's well, start. It was really good talking with you. Yes. Know, good. Thanks for coming all the way here to, to meet. Uh, Thank I you really appreciate that. for your time. Yeah. I really appreciate your time and your, your tweets. And yeah, you have that deep um, sort of uh, grip on these things. And yeah, you let, do too. Let's keep yeah. talking Absolutely. on Twitter and <laughs> like this. Um, what, what time is the? the oh, I've got to have a, I've, a ten. Yeah, ten. ten. I gotta go. All right. all right. Thanks so much. Thanks. Great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs>